Yesterday we ended with the objective phenomena. So objective material phenomena means just the objects. And there are five sense fields which serve as the objective supports for the corresponding types of sense, con sense consciousness. Now there are five sense consciousness, eye consciousness, ear, nose, tongue and body consciousness. And so there are corresponding objects for these sense consciousnesses. And so they are a visible object, sound, smell, taste and tangibility or touch. And touch really means a combination of three great essentials, earth, fire and air. So these serve as the objects for these five uh, sense consciousnesses. In Pali they are called Gochara Rupa or Visaya Rupa. Now if you want to see the Pali, uh, uh, please have the page in the handout uh, ready with you. <coughs> so Kochara Rupa or Visaya Rupa. So they are objective material phenomena. And after that come Bhava Rupa or sexual phenomena. And there are two, they are called faculties also. And they are the faculties, a uh, faculty of femininity and faculty of masculinity. Now these faculties have respectively the characteristic of the male sex and of uh, female sex and of the male sex. Their function is to show femininity and masculinity. They are manifested as the reason for the mark, sign, work and ways of the female and of the male. Now the femininity or masculinity means something by which we know that a being is a male or a female. And there are said to be the mark, sign, work and ways of females and males. They have different different marks, different signs, different work and different ways of doing things of male, female and male. And so by observing these, we know that a being is a male or a female. So the reason for the mark means just the, the reason why we know that a being is a female or a male. And so the mark, sign, work and the ways themselves are reasons here. For the sexual structure of the body. So a male is different from female and a female is different from male. And so when we see that this is a, a, a man, we know that this is a man. And when we see a woman, we know this is a woman because the, and their body structure is different. And it's feminine or masculine features. So their features are also different. Females have one kind of features and the male has another kind of features. So just by observing the features, we know that a being is a, a female or a male. And for the typical feminine and masculine occupations, that means the work they do. Men do uh, heavy work and so on, and women don't do uh, something like that. So, and also the... When girls play, they play with some toys and small toys. But when boys play, they play with uh, different things. So by looking at how they play, then you know that this is a girl or this is a boy. And also the typical feminine and masculine department. So how they walk, how they sit and so on. Now you can know just by looking at a person how he or she sits or he walks, 
you know that this is a man or this is a woman even though uh, you cannot see the the person uh, clearly with the room with the dim light now you 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 know that this is a woman walking or this is a man walking because they they are different so that something that makes us know that this is a man this is a woman is what is called phenomena of sex so this is a kind of rupa this is a kind of uh, material property and it is said that this rupa or material property is located in the whole of the body so wherever in the body of man the masculinity is distributed everywhere and in the body of a woman the femininity is distributed in all parts or places and the next one is hadiya rupa material phenomenon of the heart now on the heart base see chapter 3 section 20 The heart base has a characteristic of being the material support for the mind element and the mind consciousness element. Now, mind element means a five sense door adverting and to receiving consciousness. So, there are two things here. mind element and mind consciousness element five sense to adverting and to uh, receiving consciousnesses so they are called mind element and these two are called what seeing consciousness element so seeing consciousness element hearing uh, smelling Uh, tasting and touching consciousness element and these t- the five sense to adverting and to receiving consciousnesses are called mind element and in pali they are called mano dhatu and the rest are called mind consciousness element mano vijnana dhatu so heart base is the support for or is the seat of the mind element and the mind consciousness element for for those types of consciousness rather than the 10 uh, sense consciousnesses now its function is to uphold them it is manifested at the as the carrying of these elements so it is to be found in dependence on the blood in the heart now not the heart itself is called hadaya what to hear although the word hadiya means a heart the hadiya what to is not the heart itself but it is fo- to be found in dependence on the blood in the heart so blood is always circulating from the heart and this heart base exists depending on the blood inside the heart and is assisted by the four great essentials and maintained by the life faculty so it is kept alive by life faculty and it is supported by the four great essentials now hadiya what to is always a problem so please turn to page 144 this is chapter 3 section 20 now the heart base according to the pali commentators the heart serves as a physical support for all chitas other than the two sets of five full sense consciousnesses which take their respective sensitivities as their basis in the canonical abhidhamma the heart base is not expressly mentioned now this is a problem because abhidhamma is a place where all realities are mentioned all chaitas are mentioned all chitisikas are mentioned so we expect that all rupas are mentioned in abhidhamma and the first book of abhidhamma enumerated all chaitas chitisikas and rupa 
But in that book, the heart base is not mentioned. The heart base is missing in the Dhammasangani, uh, the chapter on Rupa of Dhammasangani. But in the Patthana, the seventh book of Abhidhamma, the last book of Abhidhamma, it simply speaks of that matter in dependence on which the mind element and mind consciousness element occur. So, even in Patthana, Buddha did not use the word Hadaya, heart. Buddha used a pronoun, a certain matter, depending on which the mind element and mind consciousness element occur, and that matter serves as support and so on. So, there is a problem for the commentators here to explain that uh, that matter means the heart base. The Buddha did not say that it is the heart base, even in Patana, the seventh book of Abhidhamma. So he just said, on a certain rupa, the, the mind element and mind consciousness element depends, and that matter is a support for the mind element and mind consciousness element. But the commentators interpret that to mean the heart base. They give us some reasons for that. So, on the handout, I've given that uh, reasons for existence of Hadaya Watu. as explained in the commentaries. Now, Mano Dhatu and Mano Vinyana Dhatu. Mind element and mind consciousness element. When they arise in Kama Vajra Sphere and Rupa Vajra Sphere, they must depend on matter. So, when Chaitya arises in, in Kama Vajra Ram and Rupa Vajra Ram, they must have a material base. So, Mano Dhatu and Mano Vajana Dhatu are consciousness. And when they arise in Kama Vajra and Rupa Vajra realms, then they must depend on matter. They cannot arise without depending on the matter. Just as Chaku Vajana and others depend on eye sensitivity and others. So, seeing consciousness depends on the eye or eye sensitivity Hearing consciousness depends on the ear sensitivity and so on. So just as the Chaku Vinyana and others depend on eye sensitivity and others, so Mano Dhatu and Mano Vinyana Dhatu must depend on some kind of meta. What can that meta be? That Rupa cannot be the four Mahabuddhas. Mahabuddhas means the great essentials. Earth element, water element, fire element, and air element. So that rupa cannot be the four great essentials because they are dependent upon by upada rupas. Upada rupa means depending rupas. There are 24 depending rupas. So because they are dependent upon by upada rupas, they cannot be a dependence for Mano Dhatu and Mano Vinyana Dhatu because they already have uh, have to be occupied with the Ubara Rupas. So the meta which Mano Dhatu and Mano Vinyana Dhatu depend cannot be the four Mahabuddhas, four great essentials. So it, it, is, a, it is called a method of elimination. Now uh, we have some Rupas and then we eliminate one after another. So this is a method of elimination. Now the Mahabuddhas are eliminated. Therefore, that Rupa must be an Ubada Rupa. If it is not Mahabuddha, it, if it is not great essential, then it must be the ones that depend on the four great essentials. Among the Ubada Rupas, they cannot depend on Chaku or 
eye sensitivity, etc., because they, the chaku and others, are dependent upon by chaku vijnana, seeing consciousness, etc. So, the upada rupas cannot be the uh, eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body because they are dependent upon by seeing consciousness and so on. Neither can they depend on rupa, sadda, and so on. That means these two, manodhatu and manovanyanadhatu, cannot depend on uh, sight, sound, and so on. Because they, uh, sight, sound, and so on, can be found externally too. Because hadaya must be internal. So, it cannot be the rupa that manodhatu and manovanyanadhatu depend upon cannot be uh, sight, sound, taste, smell, and touch. Because they can be found externally also. They cannot depend on jivita, life faculty, because it has the specific function of protecting the kornes and rupas. It has the work of, the job of uh, protecting the other rupas that arise with it. And since it has that function, it cannot function as the seat for manodhatu and manovanyanadhatu. They cannot depend on the two qualities of sex either. They cannot depend on femininity or masculinity. Why? Because these dhatus arise also in those who have no sex qualities. Now there are beings who have no sex qualities who are neither female nor male. So they are sexless persons. Now these two manodhatu and manovanyanadhatu can arise in those persons and so they cannot be the support of manodhatu and manovanyanadhatu. Then they do not depend on ahara. We have not come, come to ahara yet. They do not depend on ahara. Ahara means nutrition. So they do not depend on ahara for the same reason that it is found externally too. Ahara can be found in, in anything outside also. It should therefore be understood that there must be some other rupa or meta on which these dhatus must depend. And that rupa must be a dependent one itself because it must depend on the four great essentials and not a Mahabuddha. And that dependent one, which is the seat of these dhatus, is none other than the Hadayawatu. So here it is very arbitrary. <laughs> so since the others cannot be the dependence of Manodhatu and Manovanyanadhatu, there is only one left and that one must be the Hadayawatu or heart base. So this is the argument the ancient teachers put forward. So, following this argument, then the rupa on which manodhatu and manovanyanadhatu depend cannot be uh, four essentials, cannot be uh, eye and so on, cannot be a visible object and so on, cannot be jivita, cannot be femininity or masculinity, cannot be nutriment. So, what else? There is only one left, and that is Hadayawatu. Now, let us say we accept this, but we have another question. Now, as you said, we accept that there is a, a ruba called Hadayawatu, but why is it not mentioned in the Amasangani? where actually all ultimate realities are listed. So in the list of, of uh, rupas, in the, in the chapter on rupa in the book Kamasangani, heart base was not mentioned. So the reason why it was not mentioned in the Kamasangani, where all rupas are mentioned, actually not only rupas, the Chaitas and Chaitas also, 
is there if it were mentioned there the uniformity of presentation of the what to dukkha and aramana dukkha so important for the understanding of the doctrine and the realization of the truth by listeners would be broken and thus defeat the very purpose of the doctrine the realization of truth by listeners now listeners have some kind of pe- peculiarities in their minds now some like this some like another one and so on so when buddha was enumerating the rupas he enumerated in what are called diets so there are two sets of diets they are called what to dukkha and aramana dukkha so by way of basis and by way of objects so when teaching the what to dukkha and aramana dukkha buddha did not mention the hadiya what to or had base there that is because if he were to teach the what to dukkha and aramana dukkha in detail say in in completion then it would make his listeners difficult to realize the truth now when you are taught something and you are listening to it there is some kind of a rhythm or something so when you are listening to and these are two these are two these are two these are two and then the last one this is only one something like that when you hear this then the, you, your hearing is dis, uh, interrupted or disturbed so buddha did not want to make the minds of his listeners disturbed by stating not the full enumeration of the rubas here so buddha left them out that means although there is uh, hadiya watu buddha did not uh, mention hadiya watu here for fear that if he put in the hadiya watu it would break the way of presentation of the rubas here and and that way of presentation is very important for his listeners to see the truth to gain enlightenment Now in order to understand this please turn to another page in the handouts now what to diet and aramana diet so there buddha mentioned there is rupa which is the base or seat of i consciousness there is rupa which is not the base of i consciousness now there are two so the base of i consciousness means the i and not the base of i consciousness means the other rupas and similarly with the second one there is rupa which is the base of ear consciousness and there is rupa which is not the base of ear consciousness so the first means and the ears and the second mean all others except ears and the third is there is rupa which is the base of nose consciousness and there is rupa which is not the base of nose consciousness again there you can find out uh, that one means the nose sensitivity and the other means the other rupas except nose sensitivity the four also uh, there is rupa which is the base of tongue consciousness and which is not the base of tongue con- consciousness and the fifth there is rupa which is the base of body consciousness and there is rupa which is not the base of body consciousness so they are easy to understand now we come to aramana diet uh, with regard to objects now here buddha said there is rupa which is the object of i consciousness what is the object of i consciousness visible object and there is rupa which is not the object of i consciousness the remaining material properties except the uh, visible object so this similarly with the other diets there is rupa which is the object of ear consciousness and which is not the object of ear consciousness and number 3 and 4 the same now we come to 5 there is rupa which is the object of body consciousness and there is rupa which is not the object of body consciousness up till now we have no problem now if buddha were to put the sixth diet in the what to diet he would have said 
there is rupa which is the base of mind consciousness. There is and there is rupa which is not the base of mind consciousness. Now, what is the base of mind consciousness? It is the heart base. And what is not the base of mind consciousness? The other material properties. So we are still okay with this sixth diet in the what to diet or base diet. But when we come to the Aramana diet, we have a problem. There is Rupa which is the object of mind consciousness. That means all Rupas. All Rupas can be object of uh, other consciousness rather than the ten thing, etc. and then the three mind element. So the other types of consciousness are called mind consciousness and the rupa, which is the object of mind consciousness, means all the rupas. So it is okay. But the second one, there is rupa, which is not the object of mind consciousness. There is nothing which is not the object of mind consciousness, because every rupa is the object of mind consciousness. So, uh, in this sixth diet, Aravana diet, for sentence one, we are all right because we can say all, all rupas are the object of mind consciousness. But when we come to the second sentence, we have nothing to offer. We can say only, no, there is nothing which is not the object of mind consciousness. So the way of presentation uh, would be broken there. So when it is broken, the minds of the listeners would be disturbed. And so it would be impossible for them to get enlightenment or to see the truth. So in order not to disturb their understanding, in order not to disturb their minds, Buddha left out the sixth diet also in the Watu diet. Although it is all right to have the sixth diet among the Watu diet, but when he came to the seven, uh, Aramana diet, then it would be impossible to put in the sixth Aramana diet. So when he, he could not put the sixth Aramana diet in among the Aramana diets, then he also left the six Watu diet from among the Watu diets. So that is why Tadiya Watu is not mentioned in the first book of Abhidhamma, the Dhamma Sangani. So in the seventh book of Abhidhamma, Haryavatu is mentioned by the words a certain rupa. And that a certain rupa should be the Haryavatu for the considerations we just studied. So by the method of elimination, we eliminate one by one and so we are, we are left with just the heart base. So according to the Abhidhamma teachings, Heart base is the base of or seed of many types of consciousness. It is not the seed of seeing consciousness, but it is a seed of other types of consciousness. And nowadays there are heart transplants. <laughs> so this is a problem. I just read an article written by Bamis Monk. He was relaying an article in English he read. He lives in the United States. I didn't get to read that article in English. So in the Bamis article he said there was a report of a person who received the transplant. So after he became well again, he began to like things that he did not like before. He wanted to smoke and he liked the food uh, which he did not like before. So he was unable to understand why this change. So he tried to find out the donor. So he met the wife of the donor and the wife of the donor said her husband liked say, smoking and this, this kind of food and so on. So. It is nowadays at least 
accept that, that there must be connection between mind and the heart and not just uh, with the brain. So brain may be involved in this uh, working of mind, but we cannot rule out the heart uh, as the base of consciousness. And also, when we are happy, we have some kind of feeling in the heart. When we are sad, another kind of feeling. And when we are afraid, then the heart will beat violently and so on. And so uh, we take that the heart. Heart is the base of the many types of consciousness. So this is a heart base. Okay, the next one is Jivitendriya, life faculty. So this is the material life faculty and there is another life faculty um, uh, among the 52 Chaitasikas. So it is a material counterpart of the mental life faculty, one of the seven universal Chaitasikas. Now it is called a faculty because it is a dominating influence over its adjuncts. Now this uh, jivita or life faculty protects the material properties that arise and exist with it. Now there is a question. If life faculty protects others, who protects it? So we say life faculty protects the cognizant material properties. Then who protects it? It protects itself while protecting the other material properties. And it is explained with the simile of a, a boatman. So when a boatman takes the boat to the other shore, he takes himself too. When a boatman takes other people to the other shore, he takes himself to the other shore too. So in the same way, when it arises, it protects other material properties as well as itself. This is one of the components of life faculty. The others are heat, body heat and consciousness. And the next one is Ahara, nutriment, and it is a nutritive essence that we find in the food we eat. The Bali word Kabli Karahara means loosely edible food. Now Kabli Kara means making a handful. Ahara means a, a nutritive essence or food. So food after making a handful, that means when you eat, you, you make a handful of food and then you put it in your mouth. But the ahara here is not the food itself, but the nutritive essence that is in the food. So that is why this ahara can be found anywhere. Not only in food, but in outside things also, in flowers also, there is a kind of nutritive essence. So that is what is called ahara among the 28 types of material properties. So up till now we get 18 types of material properties beginning with uh, earth element, water element and so on and as I explained yesterday the tangibility has no separate number because tangibility is nothing but uh, earth, fire and water combined and then there are femininity and so on so we get these 18 types of material properties and these 18 are called in Pali uh, top of the base Nipphana Rupa concretely produced matter these are the real matter and so they are described as first matter possessing intrinsic nature. So they have their own nature. Each has a distinct objective nature such as hardness in the case of earth element etc. 
So earth element uh, has hardness and water element has uh, cohesiveness or fluidity as its characteristic and so on. So they have their own characteristics. And they are described as meta uh, possessing real characteristics again. So here real characteristics mean they are impermanent, they are suffering and they are no soul. And also uh, they have the three marks of conditions phenomena that is arising present and passing away. So these are called marks or characteristics because by these marks we know that uh, they are impermanent. Now you know something to be impermanent when you see that it arises and disappears. And when you see arising and disappearing of a thing, especially the disappearing after arising, you know that it is impermanent. When you know that it is impermanent, you also know that it is suffering, it is dukkha. And also you know that there is no core, no permanent entity there, and so you also know, know another. So these are called characteristics or marks. And these 18, since they are the real existing uh, phenomena have these characteristics. So they are called meta possessing real characteristics. And also they are called concretely produced meta because they are directly produced by conditions such as karma, etc. Now you will study the causes of Ruba later. And there are four causes of Ruba, karma, consciousness, Utu or temperature and ahara or nutriment. So they are produced by these four or one or two or three or four of these causes and so they are called concretely produced matter. And also they are called material matter. That means matter, matter, the real matter. Now rupa. In Pali it is called rupa, rupa. That means when we repeat something, we made it more emphatic. So when we say not just rupa, but rupa, rupa, that means rupa, which is real rupa. Now, uh, beginning with the space element, there are ten material properties. They are not real rupas, actually. They are just some modes of the 18 we just studied. So they do not have the real arising presence and disappearing. But they are called Rupa. So the 18 are not like those. The 10 non-concrete matter, the 10 are called Rupa. But these 18 are Rupa Rupa, a real Rupa, not like those. When we say rupa, they are, they are real rupa, they possess the real characteristic of undergoing deformation or change. And they are also called matter to be comprehended by insight. Now that is important. Because they are to be made the objects of insight contemplation by way of the three characteristics. That means when you practice vipassana meditation, you can take only these, one of these 18 as object and not the, the 10 uh, we, we are to study. Because the other 10 are actually not real or not real ultimate realities, although they are mentioned as Rupa here. So only the 18 concretely produced matter can become the object of Vipassana meditation. So when you practice Vipassana meditation, you may take earth element as the object and try to see it as impermanent suffering and on so. Or you may take some others of uh, these 18 as the object of your Vipassana meditation. But you cannot take the space element as, uh, pra as the object of Vipassana meditation and so on. So these 18 kinds of material phenomena are 
the real rupa or the real meta and they are called by different names sabhava rupa meta possessing intrinsic nature or meta sanlakana rupa meta possessing real characteristics or real marks nipana rupa concretely produced meta rupa rupa the real meta or material meta and sammasana rupa meta to be comprehended by inside or meta that can be comprehended by inside that can be the object of your inside meditation or vipassana meditation now we come to anipana rupa non concrete meta so they are not real meta but they are included in this list as meta and the first one of them is prichida rupa now in the manual it is akasa dhatu akasa means space and so this is space space element and space element here means space between groups of meta in another section so you will study the grouping of matters so matters are grouped together like the thought processes there are say a group of eight material properties 9 10 11 12 13 and so on so they are studied uh, as groups this space element is the space between these groups of matter now when two groups meet even though we do not see the space there is a space so that space between the groups of matter is what is called space element here not the open space what we call space now so that is not space element meant here and then there is what is called a limited space that means is the space limited by some hole or something so that space is also not the space here and also there is another kind of space that a yogi removes when he wants to practice uh, or attain arubha vajra jhana so when he wants to attain arubha vajra jhana he takes the space as object right so that space he obtained through or after removing the the mental mental image so that is also called space and that is the object of the first arubha vajra jhana consciousness but space here does not mean that so space here means actually the space uh, that becomes evident when two or three groups of matter come together so when these two or three groups meet then between them there is a kind of space and that space in between the uh, material groups is called a uh, space element or akasa dhatu here since it is just space it has no actual existence and the next are in pali called vinyakti rupa communicating phenomena or here imiti- intimating material phenomena vinyakti intimation is that by means of which one communicates one ideas feelings and attitudes to another So vinyati is something by which we let other people know our wishes know what we want to do so that is called vinyati in pali and it is uh, translated here as intimation and there are two kinds of intimations bodily intimation and verbal or vocal intimation by body 
we make other people understand and by speech we make other people understand our wish our de- desires and so on the bodily intimation is a particular mode in the consciousness originated air element which causes the body to move in ways that reveal one's intentions do you understand that <laughs> so let us say i want to call you so when i want to call you when i want you to come here then i will use this gesture right so first there is the intention in my mind i want to call him the desire and then that desire along with the chaita produces uh, what i call air elements in my hand and since there are billions of thought movements the air elements are also billions so with the increase of the billions of air element in the hand we think there is the movement of the hand so that movement of the hand is what is called a bodily intimation but not every movement is called bodily intimation when i am asleep i may make movements but those movements are not caused by uh, this bodily intimation it just caused by some physical reasons so here there is something uh, which is uh, particular to this kind of movement when i use this movement uh, calling you with the hand there is something here so that you understand that oh i am called he, he wants me to go there that particular mode is what is called bodily intimation so that bodily intimation you cannot see with your eyes actually what you see is just the hand just the visible objects in the hand but from the movement of the hand a particular mode of movement of the hand you know that oh he wants me to go there so that kind of movement is called bodily intimation and it can be understood or perceived only through your mind not through your body although you see the uh, although what you really see is not the intimation but the movement of the body so in this case there is a question are the air elements many pieces of air elements uh, produce are they bodily intimation if air element is bodily intimation it can be anywhere even it can be outside living beings is the desire of mind bodily intimation in that case we have always this consciousness of some desire and every time we desire there must be bodily intimation it is not the case are the movements bodily intimation not every movement is bodily intimation like when i move when i am asleep so this movement is a particular movement caused by the wish on my part for you to come and so when you see this gesture calling you you know that he wants me to go there so you you come here so that is called bodily intimation so with bodily gestures we make other people know our inner thoughts or our desires now what bodily intimation do you use when you want to refuse you you move your head like this eh huh? but many of you are familiar with sinhalese people sri lankan people so what do they do <laughs> when they want to say yes <laughs> right <laughs> so when we first met sri lankan people we thought they were refusing <laughs> they were saying no to us but actually they were saying yes by that gesture 
So that is kaya vinyati in Pali and the bodily intimation. Now vocal intimation or verbal intimation is the speech and the sounds we produce. So I want to call you, say, I want to want to say come. Then first I have the desire for you to come or I have the desire to make that voice. And then I make the voice. So there are many witties going on there. When I try to make the voice, what happens is my mind causes the earth elements to be produced in the throat. So the earth elements that are produced in abundance have friction with the other elements in the throat. And through the friction of these elements, the voice is produced. So when the voice is produced, it depends on the earth element and other elements. And they are caused by my desire or my mind. So when the word come, come out of my mouth, then you know that I want you to come here. So in the voice or in the sound come, there is something that makes you know my intention. That particular mode of that sound is what we call vocal intimation. For uh, easy understanding, we may just say that this is the speech or words we use. But actually, the words we use are the sounds, and in those sounds there is a peculiar mode that makes you understand. So that is called in Pali, Vachi Vinyati Vocal Intimation. Both of these intimations are just a, a particular mode of the material properties and they have no real existence of their own. That is why they are included in here among the non-concrete matter. Now the next are the three and they are lightness, malleability and wildiness or in Pali lahuta, mududa, kamanyata. So lahuta of meta, mududa of meta, kamanyata of meta. Now, lightness or lahuda has a characteristic of non-sluggishness. Its function is to dispel heaviness in meta. Now, when we are sick, now our bodies seem to be heavy. When we do not have the food we want to eat, when we have to eat that is poor, and there is something like heaviness in our uh, body. The opposite of that heaviness, when we have the good climate, when we have good food, when we are healthy, then there is something, some kind of lightness in our body that we can walk lightly, uh, we, we can move quickly and so on. So that kind of lightness is what is called here lahuta or lightness of meta. And second one, malleability. It's a difficult word. The Bali word mududa means softness. Now, your body is made up of four great essentials and other material properties. And when the earth element predominates in your body, there is some kind of hardness in the body. When it does not pre predominate, then there is the softness in the body. So that softness is what is called Mududa here. So it is explained here as non-rigidity. So there is no rigidness in your body. And wildiness, kamanyada, that is favorable to bodily action. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. So that is what is called wildiness. In Pali words, kamanyada is also a difficult word to understand. 
That means when you want to make something, you can make it easily. So the object lends itself to be made into anything easily. So that is called uh, wieldiness. In the books, it is compared to well-prepared piece of uh, gold. So when gold is pure and it is well prepared and you can make this bar of gold into a necklace, into a bangle and so on. So that is called kamanyada. Favorable to bodily action here. So these can be detected in our bodies when we are healthy, uh, when we have good climate, when we uh, have to eat good food and so on. And these three are called mutable phenomena. They are again the different modes of the material properties in our bodies. So these two plus uh, two intimating material phenomena are called vikara rupa so they change or they are changeable the last group is of lakana rupa characteristic of matter now this category includes four types of material phenomena of this production this is number one and continuity number two are both terms for the Genesis or arising or birth of matter. One arising of matter is given here two names, the upachaya production and santati continuity. The differ in that production is the first arising of a material process, the initial launching or setting up of the process while continuity is the repeated genesis of material phenomena in the same material process. For example, the arising of the body, sex, and heart groups at conception is production, upajaya, while the subsequent arising of those same material groups throughout life is continuity. So, just the arising is given two names here, production and continuity. And the commentaries also explain that the production is the arising of material properties at the moment of rebirth. And the continuity is the arising of material properties when the I, Descartes, and so on arise. Now you have to understand uh, how uh, material properties arise after birth to understand this. So the first arising, let us say, the, the first arising of Rupa is called the production and then later arising is called continuity. Just arising but it is given two names. Now, decay is the aging of material phenomena that is easy to understand. And impermanence here means breaking up or cessation. So, disappearance or breaking up or cessation of rupa is called here impermanence. So, in Pali, decay is called jarata. And impermanent is called anicata. So these are called characteristics of meta or meta of characteristics. So these are, as I said before, not the real rubas, so they are called non concrete meta. If we add the concrete meta, 18 concrete meta, and 10 non concrete meta, we get 28 material properties. So in Abhidhamma, uh, we accept that there are 
28 material properties taught. So the first group is called Udaruba in Pali. And the second group, Ubadaruba. And among the Ubadaruba, again the first group, Pasararuba, sensitivities, and then the next group is Gojararuba, objective phenomena, and next group, sexual phenomena, or Bhavaruba, and the next group, Hadayaruba, or heart phenomenon, and then the next one is Jividaruba, or life phenomenon, and next is Ahararuba, nutritional phenomenon. And then ten anipana rubas or non-concrete matter consists of limiting phenomenon or space element and then the two vinyati rubas or communicating phenomena, bodily intimation and vocal intimation. And then the mutable phenomena, uh, lightness, malleability, wieldiness of ruba. And the last are Production, continuity, decay, and impermanence. So the last four are just the three that we are familiar with, arising, present, and disappearing. So arising is here given two names, production and continuity. We will have a break now.